Hi, it's Andre here with Long & McQuaid. Today we have Ray Wilson in the studio from ART to go over some of their flagship products from the consumer-based preamps to the more professional rack-mounted preamps. And uh, welcome to the studio. Thanks, Andre. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what we have from these smaller units to the rack-mounted units and uh, see what we got. All right, fantastic. Thank you. So let's first talk about our portable line of products, the Tube MP. There's a few options in this line, starting with the actual Tube MP itself. Now the beauty of the Tube MP is essentially it's just a two dial product. There's an input source, output balance. So if you want a little bit more tube sound uh, in your preamp, you just dial up a little on the front end, compensate with the balance on the back end, and plug that into your DAW or into your um, uh, front of house system and of course you can use this to play it live as well but uh, yeah this will give you that tube richness that you're looking for in something that you can just throw right into your backpack. Now if you want to step up your game just a little bit you can move over to the Tube MP STV3. The concept with this guy is again you have the same tube controls in the front where you've got your input stage and your output stage but there's also some presets that have been developed and tested with some of the you know, best Canadian artists you might know. Uh, this includes vocal presets, guitar presets, virtually any instrument that you think you might want to set up. So the simple part of this is if I want to set myself up for vocal, I can just select the vocal preset on the front and uh, turn up the amount of tube saturation I want, set up my output, and there I go. Now, I've also got some metering on the front, which I don't have on the Tube MP, which will really just let me see my input levels as I'm sending it out to my output source. So really cool upgrade, uh, certainly very popular because of the preset modes. Uh, but yeah, if you want to step up your Tube MP game, this would be the way to do it. Now, if you want to take uh, things to a different level, if maybe you're looking for a bit more of a permanent setup in your studio, but don't have a lot of desk space, we actually have the Project Series Tube MP. So, Pretty much everything that you see on the Tube MP is applied here, but you'll notice this has some feet on the base of it. The idea is I can stack that on top of this, so I could get myself four or five of these, stack them in my studio, and, and be able to run them like I would a mixing console. So let's talk about the, uh, the entry into the Tube MP series, Tube MP pro project series. So on the front, I've got uh, not only my regular input for my tube and my output uh, balancing, but I also have some extra gain here so I can get up to 70 dB of gain out of this box, which is really fantastic when you consider its competition. I've got things like phantom power. I even have a, a little bit of limiting here so I can just turn the limiter on and it will uh, control my mass maximum output on this device. So a nice addition to, to um, the actual entry level in the series. A couple other small things you've got are the metering on the front, uh, very, very handy, and you've got a phase uh, control as well, so you can flip your mic phase if you want to use a few of these things to say mic drums or something like that. So a next level up, a little more robust, feet on the bass, metering, uh, limiting, and so on. So very, very handy upgrade. Now the only upgrade to the Tube uh, MPPS series uh, to the USB is just that. On the back there's a, a USB port. So if you want to use this as your audio interface, you can. Uh, granted, it's a, it's a single, um, single channel, so the idea here is if I want to just plug my guitar straight into this device, plug that into my computer, I can be recording in just seconds. Everything that you see on the front, still the same, nothing changes from the other model, just the addition of USB. So really something for everyone in the entire series, right from the Tube MP all the way up to the Tube MP uh, USB. So if I want to then take my stuff to the next level and I really have a more permanent setup for my studio, I could potentially look at some ART rack mount products. Now, again, we have uh, products that are very basic and then some that are really quite advanced. So why don't we start off with the Pro MPA2, one of the most popular sellers in the line. This is essentially a two-channel tube preamp with all the basics that you had in the Tube MP series, and we'll talk about that now. You've got essentially your input and your output again, same concept, dial up how much tube that I want, and then dial up the output to compensate. But we've added a couple of other neat features as well. So you'll see right up in the top center here, we 
we have our impedance control. Now, why that's handy is if you have a, if every microphone on the market actually has what they consider to be their best performance impedance or their, their best load. So say that you took your favorite mic and its load was 600 ohms. Uh, you could actually set that for 600 just so that you get the best performance out of that mic. Now, of course, that's based on the specification, but why have a, a cool feature like that and not mess around with it? So if you want to starve your microphone a little bit or overdrive it just a touch, you could do that too by changing the impedance on it and listening to what, what you hear. And maybe you like uh, taking it off of its actual load and, and giving it uh, a different flavor. So having a variable impedance is really, really cool. The low cut filter gives me up to 200 hertz a roll off here at the very end. So of course, when my converters in my computer get the signal, I've already rolled off a lot of the stuff that I don't need, say in a, in a vocal, I might roll that off to 45 or 60 hertz or maybe even higher, so I'm not overloading my, my signal going into my computer. Of course, great metering on here, so I'll be able to see what my input levels are. A few switches down on the bottom, including phase conversion, um, 48 volt phantom power, etc. So I get two channels of that loveliness in this one box. Now, if I take it over to the digital MPA2, I essentially get the same thing out of this box. What I also get, though, is some excellent AD conversion. So again, if I want to run this as an interface, I can do just that. Um, on the back, I have uh, optical and SPDIF outputs. I also have clocking if I need to clock to my um, uh, converter, or if I want to clock to other devices, say I want to have a couple of these units, I can clock to them so I don't get any uh, digital artifacting when I'm actually running the digital signal. But um, yeah, I, I can do uh, as many as, uh, well, two channel, of course, because it's a two channel pre, but I've got my digital conversion built right in. So very, very handy function if you've got an advanced studio with digital connectivity. So moving on to some more advanced pieces, I've got the pro channel here. What I love about the pro channel is it's so complete. It basically gives me everything I'd want in a channel strip. So just like what I'd see down any channel of a console, I've got all of those controls right inside this unit. So more than just having an input and output and being able to, to apply some tube tone, I can actually have my input and output and all in between I've got an EQ, compressor, uh, and then essentially all the controls I would want to make sure my tone is tailored to exactly what I'm looking for before it ever hits the converter. So let's talk about that just a little bit. On the front of this device, I've got on the top my, my compression settings here. So I've got my uh, threshold, my ratio, my compressor. So if I want to um, you know, cut off some of the, the hard picking noises of an acoustic guitar, I can actually set my threshold at a little bit higher level, have the ratio cut it down, and get rid of those pick transients if I want to, if I want to make a more smooth tone, for example. I have the variable attack and release on the bottom, so if I really know what I'm doing with a compressor, I can dial that in exactly to what I want it to be. I still have my impedance controls, I still have my low cut filter, and my gain input, my preamp level, my output. But if I really want to get more advanced with my EQ, I can do that too. So I actually have four channels of EQ control and sweeping at the bottom for my low mid and my high mid. So I can set my lows, set my highs, find out the frequency that I want to either cut or add to, and add those functions here. And then finally, my master output uh, gives me the level I need to go into my computer. So fully functional channel strip, metering for everything, including what my uh, compression levels are, my input levels, my output levels. Um, it's really a very thorough channel strip, so you get everything that you could possibly want. Moving along, Let's talk about the uh, voice channel. So this is one of my favorite pieces in the line and certainly one of the top sellers at ART. Even though the, the, um, ch the pro channel has everything that a person would need, this unit actually tailors more to the voiceover client. It has everything that the, th that the other channel strips have, but they've added a few extra cool things. Number one, and the thing I think I like the most is the de -esser. So. Although we have um, some compression controls and EQ controls, there's actually a de-essing component here as well. So I can vary that de-esser. So I can take away the, the S's and the t the, all those types of sounds that, that uh, you don't want in your recording. So especially for dialogue, you hear that very often. Even hearing me speak right now, you probably hear some plosives and S's and so on. So you can control all that just with this knob here. Uh, but the other thing I love about this is, again, it's a full-on... Um, 
audio interface. So in the back, I've got my my controls here for uh, sorry, not my controls, but my connections for AES um, uh, optical connections, SPDIF, and I even have USB. So if I want to set up a voiceover studio, all I have to do is connect this into my USB into my computer, set my controls on the front for vocal settings, and away I go. Now, of course, you can use this for guitars, drums, etc., but certainly its features are tailored more to the vocalist. So that's essentially the lineup of preamps, and like I say, there's a, a price point for everybody. Um, if you do some searching on the web, you'll find these components in some pretty major studios in Canada and the U.S., and certainly as an international product, it, it does very well. But you'll also find products like the 2BMP in every rental department and music stores everywhere, especially bassists. They love to have that product. Take it on stage, plug in, go to front of house. It just gives you that confidence that you know, if you're going to hit really strong transient notes, that it kind of gives a little bit more control. You can feel a little bit better when you're playing, uh, and it also gives you that tube warmth. So that's the ART preamp line in a nutshell. Hopefully you've enjoyed the conversation today, and, and certainly thank you, Andre, for, for inviting me. Hopefully this uh, information was great, and uh, back over to you. I hope this video was informative. I want to thank Ray one more time for coming into the studio and giving us a great overview of these ART products. Click the link below for more information and we'll see you next time.